Hello, I'm Mark Schildhaus, and this video is on 3D printing. Let me make this uh, perfectly clear, first of all. I think it was six days ago that I completed the uh, assembly of my uh, Prasa Mark III S Plus, I think is the correct designation, um, 3D printer, and I've been playing with it since. Um, I've had several successes, a few failures. I am not a pro in this. This is a uh, beginning effort for me. And I had a lot of questions, and uh, this video, I think, is would have answered my questions um, if I'd been able to ask them if I knew what the heck I was doing. So, let me uh, get into this. Uh, about uh, two years ago, and this is August uh, 2021, because things on the internet last forever and they lose their timeline. About two years ago, I was in the San Diego Fine Woodworkers workshop uh, doing a CNC course and saw a 3D printer off on the side and said, wow, that's like uh, kind of cool. I had some other priorities along the way and uh, kind of cool, kind of interesting. We want to see what it's about. So uh, in the process of accomplishing other things and learning some about 3D printing, I took the uh, San Diego Fine Woodworkers introduction course uh, under the uh, uh, instruction of uh, Travis Good, the current president and one of their chief instructors, uh, the other day and said, okay, uh, I'm going to step into this. And the reason I stepped into it is uh, multifold. Uh, first, I have uh, one wife and one daughter that are both school teachers and they would like educational support uh, for their classroom and this thing can generate a lot of material and, uh, and do it very well. Next, I have a, at this time, a six-year-old granddaughter, uh, Princess Lily Bean of Candyland, who I absolutely love uh, making educational toys for and uh, developing her uh, intelligence and her smarts. And this thing will do that. I have numerous hobbies, including model railroading, woodworking, uh, a number of other things. And um, this will help me in that. So it's not just for one reason. So I expended the money, bought what I thought was probably the best value uh, printer on the lot, on the uh, system. I'm not endorsing Pressa. If you have another option, go for it. I just thought, based on the recommendations I had and the research I did, this was a very, very good printer. It's turning out to be that. So what can you do with this thing? Because that's one of the curiosity things. Well, along the way, um, one of the sample files that Pressa gives you on the um, SD card, which they're very nice to give you with some uh, basic files, uh, is this guy here, this Batman thing. And um, it's, it's kind of cool, kind of fun. It's just a toy. My granddaughter loves it. Princess Lily Bean um, loves this. And uh, it's just, hey, you know, is your printer working right and whatever else. And it really shows some of the excellent detail they, they've got with that. Okay, I am a big Star Wars fan. Most of the house is a Star Wars fan. Uh, the Bean loves uh, Kylo Ren. She, why? She's hung up on the bad guys. So uh, this was on Thingiverse, and um, here's the uh, URL for Thingiverse as text. And uh, he's actually three pieces. Uh, this guy here, which I call the spine, is about uh, eighth of an inch, eighth of an inch by three eighths of an inch, and he holds his head to the body. Uh, then we and that took about eight minutes to print. Uh, it's not that big. It took about eight minutes to print. One of the first lessons learned in this is this is not a fast process. Here's the head. Uh, it's not solid. It's honeycombed, as a slicer will do, to save printing time and filament and weight. And uh, that took like uh, three hours. So kind of fun. Then we end up with the uh, body with the cape and I had what's called brim put on it to add support, uh, broke that off, uh, it comes off really easy, you'll see that in another video, and uh, this took 21 hours. So um, when you put this guy together and Darth Vader is looking at you, realize that this is about 24 hours of printing. So lesson number one, this is not a fast process, but it is fun. It's fun to watch. So I'm going to put him off on the side. Okay, my wife and uh, I, uh, the whole family, are real big fans of Harry Potter, the Hogwarts series. Uh, this is also on uh, Thingiverse, and it's the uh, Deathly Hallows charm, and it, 
this is the capability of the printer. The center, this is all one piece. The center circle on this thing spins. Uh, kind of cool. Uh, really neat. Um, and it's it's set up to be a necklace. It put a little hole in the top. It's set up to be a necklace or a charm. And uh, my wife found this, and this is what we're going to look at in detail. My wife found this switch plate on Thingiverse and said, uh, go for it. So uh, we loaded it in, uh, set it up to, to print, and uh, this one took like uh, seven hours and 54, 56 minutes, almost eight hours. So uh, this is not real fast. The, the uh, 3D printing is not real fast, and it's not real fast because it's taking uh, 1.75 millimeter filament, which you'll see over on the printer, uh, which is 1 16th of an inch in diameter, it's heating it up, turning it into a, a liquid mass, and putting it out on a very, very fine line. And um, then putting it in a particular place. And the way the whole system works is it builds out layers. So it has to build uh, the first layer, then the second layer, then the third layer. And I address it later on. When it comes up to these letters, it has to build the letters in layers. So it puts a layer on the top, layer on the bottom, layer on the top, layer on the bottom. It can't come in and do all the letters, all, all this letter, and then come down and do all this letter. It doesn't work that way. Maybe it could in the future. I don't know. Okay, so one of the major assets with uh, the Presses system that I really, really liked was in the assembly, they give you this book. And this book is really well documented. This book is super. I have some issues with it and I'll show you those at the end of the uh, at the end of the video because when we get back into hooking up uh, the wires back on like pages 122 um, these arrows and colors are buried inside the images and for somebody who's slightly visually impaired like I am uh, it's really tough to find them. I'll show you those in detail at the end of the video. They also give you this operations manual, uh, printing handbook, and uh, really good, uh, really useful reading. Uh, so this particular printer is very, very well documented. One of the issues I do have with this is because the print time is so long, and you're going to be sleeping with this thing <coughs> while it's running, uh, I'm, I'm concerned because it, it's hooked up to the electrical system on the internet. And I didn't create this on the internet. Uh, somebody came up with uh, how to hook this up uh, to a smoke alarm with a relay box so that if the smoke alarm goes off, it shuts off. And because this thing will do auto recovery, as I understand it, uh, this relay box stops it from coming back on. I'm, go I'm probably going to do a video on this because the instructions are pretty good, but not quite clear and uh, I love making things correct. So with that what we're going to do is we're going to step off into what I think is a pretty complete process of going on the internet, finding some files, downloading them, uh, turning them through Slicer into G-code from STL fo format to G-code. G-code is what the system reads. Uh, yeah prepping the system, doing a uh, first layer calibration, um, just so you know what it looks like, you have to do that every once in a while, not all the time, and then watching the system run. And it's going to take a while. When we jump to the production videos, uh, I'm, it's not continuous, uh, because the production time is eight hours, I have 20, 30, 40 second clips at various points just to show you how it's going. So. Let's continue into the next phase of this video. Thanks. This is my Pressa Mark III S Plus uh, 3D printer. It's sitting in my living room at the moment. It prints really quiet. Uh, I don't smell anything. Nobody complains about any odors. It uh, does not interfere with the television if they're watching television. The home page for Pressa is P R U S A numeral 3 D dot com. San Diego Fine Woodworkers has uh, two URLs, one for club information, the other one is a member forum. Uh, they may require sign-ins and membership. One of the things I highly recommend you do if you're going to get involved with this, 
uh, unless you're extremely knowledgeable, is become associated with a mentor, whether it's an individual who knows how to do this or a group who knows how to do this. There is a learning curve to this. And um, mentors, uh, coaches, YouTube, uh, extremely helpful in getting through some of those learning curves. And if Amazon doesn't sell it, YouTube has a video on it. Uh, if you go over to YouTube and just search 3D printing, you'll find thousands of videos, including mine. And uh, many, many, many of them are extremely helpful, uh, very informative, and really sparks off your imagination. I've just initiated the uh, first layer calibration run, and you're going to see the um, 3D printer uh, find its nine reference points. There's magnets underneath the board that that silver and black sensor um, on the print head pick up and they set the XYZ uh, length width height uh, for the printer and then the printer comes back and puts a test line um, on the extreme uh, front left corner of the um, of the bed mesh bed as it's called and that's just to get flow through the nozzle and and to start to flow and then it goes and prints a zigzag pattern which I've cut uh, so we don't have to watch all of it and then it goes up and prints in the uh, in the upper left corner of the uh, in the front left corner of the bed mesh bed it prints a rectangle and that allows you to adjust the uh, height of the nozzle which is which affects the um, the width and thickness height of the the filament run in this video I have a slight issue with that and I adjusted it uh, very slightly it's it's done in millimeters I adjusted it by a 0 0.020 millimeters uh, very small but that's how critical this is I've moved over to Thingiverse.com, a major resource for uh, items to print up in uh, the files, and searched in Harry Potter and I found the light switch cover uh, that my wife wanted printed. So um, it's down here. I'm going to select it and it'll come up and it'll give me another screen and it'll say, do you want to download all the files? And the answer is yes, I do. And then my system is going to come up and ask me. Uh, if I really want to download this and the answer is yes I do so uh, it now downloads it to my hard drive and at this point it's already over there so we'll go over and look at it. The file downloads as a zip file and I've saved it off to a specific directory on my hard drive and then I've unzipped it and uh, that's what you're seeing up here as Harry Potter light switch 2021-08-10 and these um, files, these, this, this group of files, uh, some of them you're going to find this block to be very, very well documented. You'll see many things inside of them. On others, uh, you'll just find the STL and it'll say, hey, this is what I created, uh, which is okay. Uh, some of them are really well documented. Some of them are, hey, this is my production run, have at. Uh, they're all free, so uh, appreciate what the, uh, what the creators did for you. So I downloaded the zip file, extracted it into a directory that I prefer, and now I'm going to bring it into Slicer. Uh, one of the thing, one of the reasons I bought the uh, Pressa printer is it comes complete and it comes compatible. It's using its own software. So uh, in the Pressa Slicer, which you saw the opening screen uh, just moments ago, I'm going to come over here. I'm going to click on File. I'm going to click on Import and come over to here import STL it comes up to the directory of uh, Harry Potter light switch I'm going to click on the STL and uh, file and I'm going to click open and at this point uh, it's it's on the system from here I can do a lot of various things with it if I click it I can move it around 
and uh, have some fun with it and if you want to print it over here if you want to print two of them at one time you can as I said this is an eight hour process over on the right side uh, my system is set up I'm using PLA as a filament and uh, Mark 3S as my printer uh, infill is 15 I just leave it that way I leave brem uh, to, to be set uh, as a default. It's going to print on everything I've got. It just increases the adhesion of the object to the uh, mesh bed. And uh, if I want to change the size, I can come down here and increase it either by percents or increase it by signs, by size, and uh, this locks the ratios in. If I want to deal in millimeters, uh, I can remove the check. If I want to deal in inches, which I prefer, I can leave it checked. And then I am going to select Slice Now. When it slices, it does it really quick and uh, it comes up with a whole lot of things that we're going to see and among others these are all the layers and they're all color coded and when you look back at uh, the image uh, the object here uh, it'll tell you what your layers are and how you're going to go and here's the brim that it's putting on it and it's telling it uh, support material interface is down here and uh, it's it's telling you everything you, you need to know so to speak not going to get a whole lot into it. Um, other people are very, very knowledgeable at this. I generally take the defaults. The next thing I want to do is I want to export the G code. So I'm going to click export and I want it to come back to the same directory that I had. So I'm going to come over here and because I've got some already up there, uh, because this is not the first one, I'm going to make this C dash C. So it tells you when it goes to save it what its estimated uh, production time is and this time here it's eight, eight hours and 28 minutes so I'm going to click save and now we have when we go back over to our directory we when we go back over to our directory uh, we have our C file not sure why, but we went from eight hour, from uh, seven hours and fifty six minutes to eight hours and twenty eight minutes. Whatever reason it did that, it did it. So, uh, pretty happy. Now, what we need to do is we need to load it into the uh, SD card because these are on my hard drive. We need to load it into the SD card and then take it to the printer. So, as stated or implied, uh, this is a very sequential. Um, process and the next process we have here is we need to clean the table. Uh, I'm going to use isopropyl alcohol and when you buy this stuff make sure it is isopropyl alcohol and not rubbing alcohol. If it says rubbing alcohol on the label it has oil in it and the oil interferes with the adhesion of the table. So what you do is you take some soft element uh, tissue paper uh, toilet paper, paper towels, and uh, you get alcohol on it and you clean the table without touching it. Clean the table. Try to get all of it. We're printing in the center. So, clean the table. It's done. This thing needs to be disposed of properly. I'll take care of that as soon as we get into the next step here. Now I'm going to turn the power supply on and Prisa is very nice about giving you the SD card. Uh, it's got some sample files on it. I've been using it to transfer stuff over. It goes in, some people call it upside down, I agree with that. It goes in with contacts forward on the left side of the display and the next thing that comes up is um, sorting sorting the um, displays. So I'm going to show you what these are. It sorts the displays in several ways and what we're going to do is we're going to push the uh, button to bring us up to the menu and we are going to scroll down to print from SD. We're going to click print. It's going to take us to the main and we're after Harry Potter switch and it gives us some data. We're using PLA and we're in the Mark III at 7 hours and 56 minutes by the G-code process. That's the estimate. 
So we're going to click, that's what we want to do. It's checking the file. Now it's going to bed heating. While it's heating, I'm going to put you back on the tripod and uh, we'll catch the rest of the action. The bed is heating and when it comes up to temperature, it's going to run some processes of checking its own alignment uh, and those are what were required or done in the setup and the adjustments and then it's going to start printing and I'm just going to let it run. Status report because it tells you what it's doing. Uh, the nozzle's up to 217 uh, degrees centigrade. The bed is up to 56 degrees centigrade so it's got a couple of degrees to go. Its target temperature is 60. The nozzle's already up to temp. And when they say this thing consumes power, it consumes power because of the heat. It's now checking its alignments based on those magnets that are in the bed. It's really cool. It's happy with that. This first line is just to clear the nozzle and to get the uh, filament as a fluid coming out of the nozzle. And if this is really screwed up, it's time to stop, start the process over again. It looks good right now. We have brimming set on this print and uh, that's what it's putting out right now. It starts from the outside and works its way in or it starts from the inside and works its way out. It's up to the software. You don't control that. And according to the menu, we have seven hours and 55 minutes remaining in this. I'm going to let it run for a minute. We'll zoom in so you can see it. One of the reasons it takes so long is that filament is coming out uh, very thin, uh, both uh, in all dimensions, X, Y, Z. And it's putting down layer after layer, but it has to get the first layer complete before it can start the second layer. We're going to come back in recurringly throughout the period and look at this and we'll see how it goes. It's interesting to see and you can see in uh, the development software for this the order that it's actually going to do these layers in. This is a switch plate as we uh, as I showed you earlier. My wife wants it. It's uh, associated with Harry Potter. And uh, those are the two screw holes uh, that are going to hold the switch plate to the switch box. In the process of putting down the first layer, it's defined that dimension. Kind of cool. And sometimes things go wrong. And uh, this is an example. For some reason, it's grabbing itself and, and pulling through. So we'll have to see what happens. So the system is back to checking its alignment, does this every time. Now it's going to run that first strip and this is just to clear the nozzle. And it looks good. Now I'm going to go in and on the display, which I can't quite get to. I'm going to lower the 
So I've just lowered the print head 1.655. It's progressing. It's showing 7 hours and 33 minutes left in its print process and just came back to check on it. Kind of interesting to watch what patterns it's in in, in the software. You can see what patterns it's going to do when. Just put another layer on the screw slots and the screw holes. Just a uh, video update. We're at 6 hours and 55 minutes remaining according to the um, uh, screen software. And the system is just off and running all by itself. That rim around it is called the brim. That adds to its cohesiveness to the table. Stops uh, that previous failure which I showed you. Off and running. I'm off to read. We'll check in later. Still spooling away according to the screen. Six hours and 13 minutes remaining. Just keeping an eye on the printing. Uh, right now we have 5 hours and 48 minutes remaining. So, kind of fun. Watching it do its thing. And it says we're 27% of the way through the print file. And we're now at 32% according to the screen. Uh, 5 hours and 22 minutes remaining. And it's just making its way through the system. Gonna change the angle just a little bit. Five hours and 21 minutes, 32%. Just having fun. Reading the screen, we're at 41%. Four hours and 39 minutes remaining, that's an estimate. And the printer is working on a diagonal pattern now. It interlaces uh, at angles, uh, different layers for strength. It does that in the slicer mode. It's all done for you, so you don't have to figure it out. Pretty cool. Just to check up on our printing, uh, right now we are at four hours remaining. It's showing 49% complete. Uh, through the file. Uh, one of the caveats is um, that doesn't take into account how long an individual command line may be. So uh, it's it's close. Um, as other videos will tell you, a file that says uh, four hours may take four hours and eight minutes or may take three hours and 52 minutes because the length of the command lines may affect how long it actually takes to accomplish. But right now, we're at 49%, uh, four hours remaining. Just taking its time. I'm just guessing that the reason that it went to this wave pattern was because of the fill option. Uh, Splicer tries not to build solid objects. Um, that increases printing time, increases the uh, 
the weight increases the use of filament and uh, it's it's probably trying to reduce that so it had the intention of building a solid layer over these prints and it may have done that if you remember the Deathly Hollows charm it has the ability to to uh, to, to make holes in things kind of interesting That's showing 62% uh, complete through the file. Three hours and one minute remaining. And it's just working its way through. This is a fast process. Total sarcasm. It's an interesting process, but it's a fast process. It's a, it's a slow process. Okay, we are showing 68% complete, that's through the lines of code, and it's estimating 2 hours and 30 minutes left. Um, one of the advisories as I was thinking about this is, in 5 minutes you're seeing what took 2.5 or 3 hours by the printer to generate, because I'm shooting snippets that are probably uh, 30 to 40 seconds long each. So, the printer is just working along its way. So well, status report, uh, the screen is showing 70%, 74% of the uh, code lines completed, showing approximately two hours remaining. And uh, it's still working on the basic uh, switch plate itself. Just off, doing its thing. The display is saying 81% of the uh, code lines have been executed. Uh, an hour and 30 minutes remaining and it's off just doing its thing building another layer on the front of the switch plate now we're just watching it work it says 93 percent of the code lines processed and 30 minutes remaining and we're just kind of having fun just watching it do its thing. It's putting the words on the, on the plate now. Seven hours and 56 minutes according to its calculation. It's no, usually pretty close. We'll see. Okay, the display is showing three minutes left, so it's getting close. Um, where it's going to end, exactly when it's going to end, who knows, 99%. Uh, this is a close to eight hour project, seven hours and 54 minutes or whatever it was. It'll tell me again here in a second in the display, which is really helpful. Um, tells you how long it's been running. Seven hours and 56 minutes, that's an estimate. Uh, actually, the three minutes remaining is an estimate, 99%. Uh, one of the options you can do through commands is you can change the color of the, fil of the uh, filament as you go. You can do it manually or you can buy an add-on, an accessory, uh, which will take up to five colors at one time and then control uh, what what color you want, where and when, by layer. You cannot control um, through Splicer to be the bottom letters one color and the top letters another color. Um, not You can do that with a paintbrush, but Slicer says uh, each layer is one color, period. You can't segment the layer into a north, south, east, west and um, do it that way. Right now it's showing less than two minutes and I'm going to let it run 
So you're probably going to see it jump so that we catch the uh, end of the process. That jump from the top to the bottom, remember it does layers at a time, so it can't go to the top, do all of the top letters, and then come to the bottom and do all the bottom letters. It does each layer across the entire plate uh, in sequence, in entirety. And it's done. Okay. Going to let it cool, uh, and then we'll come back and we'll uh, we'll show you popping it off the uh, the plate. The plate is metal; it's heavy steel. Um, probably, I'm I'm going to guess it 16, 20 gauge steel. When it cools, you can flex this the uh, the mesh bed, as it's called, which is textured on my system, and that should pop off. And then the brim uh will be easily to re uh, easily removed remember i put the brim on to increase the adhesion to the plate and it usually works okay we'll come back and catch it after it cools okay we've given it some time to cool just in case uh the magnet the mesh bed is magnetic it sticks and as i said earlier they come off uh you just bend it it's already it's already loose it's off that's how quick it comes. The mesh bed goes back. This is the brim, and uh, it normally comes off pretty easy. On the previous stuff, it's come off pretty easy. So there we go. Looks like we might have some touch-up work to do with the razor knife. Maybe not. Maybe this will pull it. Maybe this thread will pull it. It will. Still a little touch of work to do, uh, a small file, whatever. And uh, a switch plate, almost eight hours of print time, uh, made out of PLA, uh, supposed to be very strong, whatever, uh, really nicely textured. Um, it looks good. Now I get to turn it over to my wife, who gets to paint it and put it up somewhere. So a Harry Potter switch plate. Only uh, close to seven hours, uh, close to eight hours of production. And that's the back of it if you want to see what it did to the back. Okay. Sound good? Thanks. Bye. And I said I had some issues with, um, with the assembly manual. And these two images show basically what they are. The print on these is rather small. That coin in there is a U.S. quarter. It's just over an inch in diameter. And inside these images, there's arrows that are very hard to pull out of exactly where these wires are supposed to go. Okay, they're all called polarized. They're all sized, so it's really tough to, to get A into B and B into A. So it, it is tough to get them in the wrong spot. But it's tough to find the right spot and it sure would be nice if these arrows came for, um, outside uh, the image so that you could you could follow the arrow into its target rather than have the arrow buried inside the image however I, I go back to it's a really well constructed clear uh, manual I, I wish they would have actually made their prototype for the manual um, a rainbow many many color parts so that you could see where the parts go because a lot of them are black and you're putting a black on a black part and it's it's just fun for those of us that are slightly vision impaired but it's a a good manual just 
just, it could just help us a little more. So total involved in this, uh, taking it over to thingiverse.com, um, downloading the file, extracting it, uh, creating the special directory. I use special directories to hold files. Uh, and then taking it through Slicer, and then taking it over to the uh, uh, Pressa 3D printer and printing it. Uh, it was probably close to nine hours for a switch plate. Here are some of the URLs uh, that should be of interest to you, including my home page, which uh, I have stuff on. Uh, in the near future, I'll probably be putting a 3D uh, tab up there, but uh, a lot of my woodworking stuff is up there. So um, I hope this um, video is helpful to you. I think it's a fun uh, activity. It's beneficial. Uh, lots of variety. Lots of capability in this program. Thanks for watching.